Hello everybody and welcome to another experiment. I thought it would be fun to try and use some of our newly gained printing skills to do some clothing and maybe dye it. Now, remember, anything that you want to naturally dye or eco-print, you have to do the process of scouring it and mordanting it, no matter what, or else it won't stick. Ooh, or else it won't stick. So, this is being scoured. It will come up to a slightly bigger simmer and go for about an hour. Hopefully these were not liar liar pants on fire when they said pre-shrunk. Uh, I got some t-shirts to try. I started with smalls because they're small enough I can roll them up and I only have so big of a dowel to deal with. And then I also have some fabric in here for another experiment. But this is the clothing and then I have some cute... Uh, like rough muslin bags that we can try and do with some iron printing. So this will be our finished objects and how to eco print them experiment. Okay, continuing our working with pre-made items experiment. If we want to dye anything that is a, uh, I mean eco dye, this is about this is close to eco. You can make aluminum acetate in an eco-friendly way if you would like to. You can also just buy it made so that you don't buy a bunch of equipment to make aluminum acetate. They come from all different kinds of things. You can use like uh, lactic acid to make aluminum lactate because the lactic acid takes on a molecule of aluminum. It's a whole world that we don't need to get involved with, but aluminum acetate is one of the or not the best mordant for cottons. So I want to try and make at least one or two colored dyed cotton shirts. So I'm going to mordant it in this. We use 5% of the fiber weight. I don't know exactly what my fiber weight was, but I'm going to guesstimate it around 100 grams. Um, the stronger the mordant, the stronger the color. So it's not necessarily even a bad thing if we get too much. So I'm going to get this started and I will show you when it is in the pot. Okay, so this is what will be our cotton mordant of aluminum acetate. It tells us that we need to keep the water at 100 degrees for one hour. We have not added the mordant yet, but I have my scanner so I can stop shoving my hand into dangerously hot pots. You want to kind of make sure you get the water and your fiber and make sure that like, because I just took this fiber out of the fridge. So we are going to try and keep it for at about 100 degrees for one hour for this mordant on the clothing. Now, I have not tried to print onto clothing, but last night we scoured the shirt and these bags. And I am going to iron mordant these ones to see if we can get them to have a reaction and leaf print onto this shirt. I have no proof that it will work. I also have no proof to the contrary that it will not. So we're going to give it a try. I will show you how I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to fold it to get it to fit onto the dowel. So we may have to like layer some leaves to make it get all over the place. But I think we can figure it out. So this is also going to go into the uh, iron mordant. Okay, so for our dyeing of pre-made objects, I have this which we scoured. It's just cotton muslin. It's just a little bag. There's a big rope over here that will add weird pressure if I wrap over that and it will probably mark whatever I'm trying to print, so we don't want to do that. So I'm going to try and have the plastic only go up to there so all of the extra thickness comes up on it and it wraps more evenly. That might be overkill. I have plastic underneath because I think I'm going to put some leaves down here on the plastic, put this over it, put some more leaves, put the plastic over it, roll it. That's the plan. Now, if I wanted to be sure that there was not going to be any bleed through, I'd put some plastic inside the bag. And if I was doing something more serious, I would do that, but I'm not. I'm just trying to learn what I'm doing here. So I'm going to try to use some chunky leaves so it kind of takes up some of the height from this rope uh, intentionally and get it wrapped up. And then we'll take a look at the t-shirt and wrap that up too. Okay, and so for our shirt, I am going to lay plastic down on the back first with leaves under that. I'm going to fold these in to make it the correct width so that they will get double printed. I can then add leaves here if I want to, to see if those will print and add more. I can just keep adding layers if I want to, but anyway, I'm going to roll this up with a bunch of eucalyptus 
uh, since we know that that will print with iron and we will have a shirt experiment to try. Okay, hey, here's our shirt. I've folded it. I've made sure there are leaves on every surface. I've wrapped some around, so I don't know. This could fail miserably. This has already been dyed once, but I've iron mordanted it, and we will see what the flip flop happens. I don't know, because it's already been dyed once, so this could be a terrible failure. It could be the best idea I've ever had, and everyone's Christmas present for the next 25 years, but we will see. I'm gonna go steam them for two hours. Okay, our iron experiments are coming out. This is our attempted print onto clothing. Well, hello. We're here to test our first attempts at coloring or printing onto clothing and or pre-made items. So this is our little tote bag that we alo or no, iron mordanted. We're trying to do kind of the same leaf print exercise. Let me lift this up just a little. Hopefully it will have a little less trouble focusing. So we'll get these guys undone and see how we did because this would be a really fun thing to give as a gift, especially if all you have to do is scour it and mordant it in iron. I mean, heck, I mean, rust stains your clothes. There's no reason to think that it's gonna wash out. Okay, so I did kind of a crazy wrapping method here that hopefully I can show you, but it may have melted itself shut. Nope, nope, we're gonna get it. So I did it like this, and I kind of like put it in its own little pocket. Oh, this one did not necessarily want to be steamed. We will not be reusing that plastic perhaps. That was maybe not what it was made for. Okay, that plastic was not what that was made for. Okay, we will throw that plastic away. He has been retired. Ah, <gasps> look! We did it! 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 It's weird, and I love it, and it's a bog pouch. Oh, look! You can just be a little boggy weirdo with your bog-covered stuff. <gasps> My whole life is this now. Look, you can see it on the inside. We'll see how much color we lose when we rinse it. It's possible we'll lose some of the darkness because, uh, again, the iron has to wash out of the fabric. The, the remaining iron particles that we mordanted the fabric with that didn't have a chemical reaction have to get washed out. So the wa water from these usually ends up being very, very uh, black. <coughs> There's more proof. I'm allergic to eucalyptus. Oh, God. But it prints so good it's worth it. Okay, here's our shirt. We can do it. We can do it. So sniffly. Oh, I want to throw away the eucalyptus so bad. People are like, oh, it smells like a spa. And I'm like, it smells like my death. Okay, so this is our first try on a shirt. And again, all we did was scour this and then mordant it in iron water or ferrous sulfate. Depends on who you ask. And I'm hoping that we'll get a cool reaction. Ah, oh, looks like we got a reaction. Okay, so this is how I put it in so that it would hopefully print through and across and around and whatnot. So I did a lot of folding, added a lot of plastic, made a lot of choices that had nothing to do with fact or ever watching a person do any of this because I've never actually watched a person do this. I'm sure that someone has, but maybe not with iron mordant. I don't know. I don't know that anyone has enough hyperfocus to devote to this like I do, or hours, or a husband willing to pay for their hyperfocus, which again, very grateful for that. Okay. Oh, the smell of eucalyptus is so strong. Okay. We're almost there. Ooh, looks so cool. Okay. I am going to do the speed thing so that you don't have to watch me do this for another five to seven minutes.
back and look, we did it. We frick frackin' did it. I love it. I love it. Do you love it? Look at, we got it all the way up on the sleeves. <gasps> so cool. At least the coolest thing I've made today. Let me lift this up so you can see it a little better. This is the back. It worked. We're wizard geniuses. We can make printed shirts. Look how cool it is up here. Ah, it's so good. And the shirt didn't fall apart like we ruined it. And my little, look, my little faulty thing worked to make it look like it was crossing over. <gasps> I did it. We are so clever. Okay, I will be back after I wash everybody, dry everybody, and then we will take a look at our first ever finished object items. And uh, once I've collected all of them that we're going to do, because I have a couple more things I want to try. But this worked, so now we can do it again. Good morning, everybody. We are going to continue our dying of pre-made objects experiments today, but I'm going to go gather some loquat leaves. We have hopefully dried out from the rain last week and from the neighbor who says I'm allowed to take them whenever I want, but I still warned him because he also has security cameras in his arm. So just always be safe. Tell your neighbors when you're going in their yard, just for safety's sake. Uh, so doing that, I'm going to go get some loquats and start a dye bath just like we did before. And we'll be attempting to dye a shirt evenly. That will be the goal. An even dye uptake. So we'll see how we do. Okay, so we're going to do shirt number two. Now, knowing what we know now, this has been iron mordanted in a nice strong iron mordant. I am, I think, going to try to shove some plastic up and through the middle so I get less bleed through. And I will attempt to do my folding over on the front side rather than the back side, I think. I think that's a good idea because then I will get the cool like weird Rorschach test thing going on on the front rather than the back and I can line it up better. Yes, that's what we're gonna do. But I'm also gonna put some plastic down the back and put some leaves down the back as well to make sure that this center portion of the rear of the shirt is covered as well. And I will try to get some pictures as we are going through this process, but if I don't, I'm very sorry. Okay, so I shoved plastic up there. This The shirt is rolled up sideways. When I unroll it, this will now be the back panel, and then I can work on the front. Okay, now that I have the front panel laid out, I can flip the sleeves over. The sleeves will print on anything they're touching, so I'll probably try to get a little bit of leaf up here. Then I'll fold them over, then I'll leaf that part, and then we'll plastic it and roll it up. Okay, got it folded up, got it folded over. There's going to be some bleed through on these panels, but we'll just see how it turns out since we've never done this, you know, this is the second time we've done it. So I'm going to plastic this, roll it, and send it. Okay, so our second uh, t-shirt is here, and our second tote bag is here, which I also did a kind of a different technique on, I guess. I tried to make it a little bit Different than the last one, just, just to see what would happen. So we will get these open. Okay, we're back to see how we did on our different style of leaf print. Now this one, I let it uh, go against itself as I did before, but I also, which one of these is tied? Oh, not that one. Uh, anyway. I also layered them in between and folded them over with really high pigment eucalyptus on the inside. Good news is the uh, string did not appear to impart any kind of color onto this, so that's good news. The, the, the cotton string I'm using is color fast, which is shocking considering how much I paid for it. Okay, I just wanted to do this one because it's a quick it's a quick unwrap that we can do together. So these are all going to be bleed through from ones on the front. I added these, uh, they're called river oaks. It's a really weird looking plant. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Very strange looking plant. But it's got these big shoelacy looking, ooh, but look how cool they printed. Ah, so cool. 
And this is a big bag. So this is double sided with the weird, this stuff on the outside. And that might print all the way through to the other ones. If it doesn't, that's okay. Wow. The other ones printed through. I can see it. All these big blobs are those weird red producing eucalyptuses. Look. Oh my gosh. We did a good job. We're learning things. We have skills. Oh my gosh, the iron prints on the back are beautiful. Look at the iron printing. Look at it. Look at the iron prints. Okay, we're going back for more of that river oak, but I have to take Chris because it's near a homeless encampment and no offense to the homeless. I just don't want to disturb them alone. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's pull all these off. But look how cool. It did exactly what I hoped. And the fabric was so thick, it didn't go through from the back to the front. It just went from the front to the back. Oh my gosh. How freaking cool. Okay, I can't wait to get this laundered and dried so you can see it. And when I do, oh man, are we going to have fun looking at that. Okay, I will, I will not make you watch me pluck 6,300 leaves off of this whole thing, but I used up the very last of all my eucalyptus that I had in the house on this bag and it was worth it. less uh murky and bled through for sure because we have the plastic on the inside we did get some cool bleed through onto the back and the back looks super cool too we did so good i'm so proud of us i'm proud of you for sticking with me through this absolutely insane experimentation process oh this one looks so much less chaotic Yay! Okay, once these are laundered, we will reconvene. I say to you, good day. Alrighty, so for our last t-shirt experiment, we have our cotton t-shirt that we have mordanted in alum acetate, which is supposed to be the very best for doing pro uh, cellulose fibers. These are the remnants of our beautiful loquat. Hopefully our dye will be just about that color, actually. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to bring this up to a boil. We're going to throw our shirt in, and I believe we have one more bag uh, to print, and then we will have completed our Can You Die on Stuff That's Already Made experiment. So let's get the loquat started, and I'm going to dye some other pieces for additional experiments because we don't like to waste our beautiful loquat tea. <laughs> Here's a quick check on our cotton t-shirt in the loquat dye. I'm not super impressed with this magical aluminum acetate mordant for vegetable fibers. I am like not, not amazed. Not loving that, but we're, uh, we're only like 20 minutes in, so we'll give it time. The results on our first ever t-shirt print you can see which leaves were actually on the front. These are bleed through from the back. But I got it all over the whole shirt, which was my goal. Like there's not one part that doesn't have leaf prints on it. And because I folded it, parts of it are a mirror image. But look, you can print on a t-shirt. 
I'll find a small friend <laughs> who will maybe be willing to wear this for me and test it and see how it washes. But we did it! We printed on something already made! Suck it, universe! Okay, reviewing our second t-shirt experiment. I think this one did exactly what we wanted it to as well. The last one, I wanted chaos and I wanted bleed through. This one, I wanted a little bit more order and less bleed through. And as you can see, crispy and lacking in bleed through. And there's the front of the shirt. You can see where I folded the arms over and they match line up and on this one especially you can see these sh this shoulder leaf matching up here from where I folded it in and over and then let me flip it and here's the back and so we even got some really cool prints down the back now you don't want to add too much more iron mordant so I don't know that it would be a good idea to add more iron mordant to get more of a reaction but you could and see what happens but the prints came out great because this is a really nice thick t-shirt I think that these I especially like this shoulder piece that looks a little bit like a piece of whoop, kelp going up anyway that's our second shirt try and we did a great job much less bleed through and chaos and still very lovely and then our other iron wardented print was on this cool rough 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 muslin drawstring bag which i rolled up after folding in half this way so all i had were the remainder of these eucalyptus leaves which printed perfectly and they bled through to the back because we know that this these are very potent leaves we'll say but on the back side let me flip our bag these are a beautiful shirt on the back side I use this stuff called river oak and oak tannins are well oak gall tannins but also oak uh, and any of those types of trees are known to be very tannin rich and so it definitely reacted with the iron and made it inky inky black so we could probably use those leaves to make some kind of very dark dye. It wasn't strong enough to bleed through to the front, which is great. We got some of the leaves that I threw onto the back as kind of an afterthought, and those printed beautifully, as you can see. And I think this is just like a really fun foraging bag. You could print a bag to carry your rocks in or collect things for your nature journal with your kids. But it's so interesting, look, you can even see where that was so strong, the tannins bled through and were stronger than the interaction with the iron all the way through the fabric. It was more powerful than that river oak. Well, anyway, I'm absolutely thrilled with these and uh, I believe we have a couple more items to review now that they're all dry. Well, I got smart enough to actually hang these. So here's the result from our gorgeous uh, green shirt that we did. Here's the result from our gray shirt that we did. Much less chaotic. You can see there's actually a little bit of color variation in there. So our gray shirt came out fantastic. And then we have our bag, the small one which also came out great. I really like that kind of messy iron mordanted look. Love it. And then as far as the loquat dye, that's fine. I don't blame the loquat. Loquat seems to be very dependent upon the mordant that you put in there because this aluminum acetate that was supposed to be the end all and be all of cellulose fiber mordanting I mean it's fine it's pinky it's not the best that a low quat can be that's for sure uh yeah and it got a little speckly I was not super thrilled with the aluminum acetate plus low quat I'm sure aluminum acetate 
or, is, or alum acetate is great for maybe other dyes, but loquat dye did not appreciate it. But I'm really excited that you can, in fact, print on uh, random stuff you find in your house. And I printed all of these in a small just because it was easier to fit them all on there. But I will revisit this process because I want to try to do some more prints onto even more interesting shirts and bags and fabric. And I just really enjoyed this. So thank you for coming along. This is one of our longer videos. So I appreciate you sticking around. If you'd be so kind as to leave me a like or a comment on which one was your favorite. I am working my very hardest to become an independent, partially disabled artist. So I would deeply appreciate any support that you can offer. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next experiment. Bye.